Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. My name is Keja Carter. I am the organizer of EIN, and I'm super excited for having a beautiful speaker for today, Madhuri Michelle Fremont. So Michelle will discuss how to prosper by leveraging your unique genius. But before Michelle comes to our virtual stage, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So first and foremost, EIN is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education and networking session during our Q&As and gratitude circle where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. So we also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network. And to download them on your mobile phone, just set into Google Play or App Store and find entrepreneurs, I-N-T-L dot network to get access to a lot of other pieces of education. And if you go to our official website, eintalks.com, you will be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you will be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. Okay, so today's event will run for 90 minutes and we'll have our speaker give her talk for 45 minutes and you will receive a private chat reminders of the time left for your talk. After that, we'll have a 15 minutes Q&A portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 5.30 p.m. Pacific. And with that, let's go to our amazing speaker for today, Madhuri Michelle Fremont. So Madhuri Michelle is a master problem solver, business intuitive and entrepreneur with 30 plus years of experience. Her passion is to change lives through unveiling and leveraging genius while supercharging real life scenarios and pathways to grow tangible business and life results. And so I'm more than happy to have Michelle on our stage to share with us her amazing talk on how we can benefit on leveraging our unique genius in our business. Michelle, the stage is all yours. Uh, thank you. And it's uh, Keisha, right? Am I saying it correctly? And it is 7 a.m. where you're at, right? Is that about right? Yeah, because that you're is in correct. The all right, let's see. I'm going to start a timer here because I'm not so good on time. So, hi, uh, welcome everybody. This is a sort of a new experience for me, and I hope I can bring you some value today. I did come here with a series of commitments about what kind of outcome we're going to have, and there's going to be plenty of opportunity for questions and answers at the end. And also, if there's anything in particular you'd like me to address while I'm talking, please feel free to put it in the chat. I may miss it. I'm not wearing my glasses. I'm wearing my contact lenses today. So if you see me put my hand over one eye, it's because I can see better in the chat window with one eye. So hi, today's conversation is about genius. And I want to give you a little bit of background about why I'm qualified to talk to you about it and why it's important. So I'm in the genus, genus, the genius genus of um, coaching. And it's a, a fairly new field for me. I've worked in a number of other businesses and I've learned that there's a general thread that runs through all of them. And one of that is that each individual comes to the table with a unique set of qualities. And whether or not you're successful with those qualities has a lot to do with how well you hone your qualities, which means it's really helpful to get a sense of who you are and put your focus there. If you're like me, you've tried a hundred different things, you've had measured success and a lot of failures. And I'm finally at that place in my life where I'm pretty clear what it is that I want to do, where I want to take it. And what I'm going to do to get there. So I made some promises to you and I'm going to do the best I can to, um, 
to follow through on them. One of the questions that we put on the table here is to know what genius is, how to stimulate its flow, and how to reach your greatest potential. So the question many people have about genius is, is genius inherited? And there are a couple of different camps around this, and I'm going to share. I am the uh, what's called the local secretary or chairman of a regional outfit. It's actually, I live in the United States in Rhode Island, and I am the chairman of our local uh, volunteer organization, which is part of National American Mensa. Mensa is a na nationwide group. Well, actually, it's a worldwide group of people who are looking for other geniuses to hang out with. So I'm putting that out there because it's kind of like a side, side gig. But what I've discovered is real genius is found among entrepreneurs. And if you're here checking out the Entrepreneurs International Network, you're here because you're an odd sort, sort of person. You're a person that probably has more drive, more interest, you're more flexible, you're more conscious about your life. And you might find that you've had a series of challenges that have come up and also a unique series of opportunities. And I'm here to talk to you about how you know those opportunities, access those opportunities, and really craft a life of choice. So I wanna tell you a little bit about some people that I know. As I said, I'm chairman of a little uh, volunteer organization and the volunteer organization has a board and it's made up of all people that are in Mensa. Mensa actually is a test in society and you have to qualify through one of a number of tests to be in the top 2% worldwide, and then you are termed a genius. Terms for genius have changed a lot. But it is something that people like to be called a genius because it gives them a sense of belonging. It gives them an opportunity to say, I may live in this life awkwardly. I may have different abilities than other people, but there's a place that I can call mine where I belong. And so we have an individual who tests. She's our testing coordinator. And we have a membership officer and we do a certain amount of recruiting. And it's pretty challenging and I wanna share with you why. When you put a bunch of quote geniuses together, you get a lot of different personalities because genius does not define anybody. What it does is it gives you some markers to reach for, but it doesn't tell you who you are, where you're going, what you're going to do with your life, what your temperament is, what your constraints are, who you're going to hang out with. And I've got to be honest, it's a lot harder to identify with another, quote, genius than it is with an entrepreneur or a healer or someone who you meet on the dance floor. So this individual says, that it's really not in our best interests to go out and share the message and encourage people to join us because it's only a select few. You have to be born with it. There's no other way about it. It is entirely genetic. It comes from birth. That's one of the people on our team. A second person on our team came into our team and he was an addict, he was an alcoholic, he went through schools, he was in special education, he couldn't function in the school systems, he was considered to be extraordinarily stupid, he was blunt, he didn't know how to get by in the world. Well, he had the fortune to meet some good people, he cleaned up his act, he went through what they call gifted youth testing because you need something like that when you get an individualized education plan in school. And lo and behold, he qualified for Mensa. He's a genius. So I gave you those two bookends to tell you that genius is not rigid. 
genius is also it's the terms for genius have changed lately they talk about multiple genius used to be that genius was you could master a certain set of tests and you could reach a certain number i don't know where that number was determined from maybe it's determined because you want to take a percentage of the population and it doesn't hold very much accuracy in this world and as i say that you might ask me why i joined mensa i will tell you it's not a very pretty story i joined mensa because i was dating on the internet and i met a guy who i absolutely was fascinated with and enjoyed his passion was going and diving with whales and working out new systems of numbers and he he lived a totally arcane life a very different life than other people lived up in an ivory tower he didn't leave it much because he was allergic to eggs and he was very rich and he didn't want to be around children in case people accused him of molestation and would take take his money from him so he lived a very tight life but for me i was so passionate with him because here was somebody i could talk about weird things with like how many people can you talk about whales with or planar geometry or go on flights of fancies with fancy with numbers and we dated for a while and then he said you know if you were smart enough you would have gone to harvard or yale and i was shattered i was totally totally shattered why do we have to be measured so my father had joined mensa when he was a young man because my mother passed when i was uh 2 weeks old and so my father at the age of 38 had to go out and date now we talk about things like people who are on different spectrums people who are hyper intelligent but maybe don't have social skills my father he has more than parting knowledge of seven languages and he's world traveled and he's also not very socially apt he's not really good at a social life so he joined mensa to meet women and i thought i'm going to join mensa to meet men <laughs> so after calling for that test i left it in a pile of mail for 2 years and 2 years later i picked it up and one of the reasons i picked it up is i'd been in a really bad car accident and i had some brain trauma and i thought you know maybe i won't tell anybody about doing this but maybe i'll go take a test and see if my brain still works because i used to have a photographic memory and i used to not trip over my words and what happens is you fill out a form you send it off they send it back and they say well go take a test with a proctor well i will tell you that i met some of the most wonderful people in my life that way and not because they were super smart but because they were super kind and they had room for someone who was super peculiar in her own rights So what is genius? I'm going to give you some new definitions for genius. In my world and in the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial world, genius is acting on your potential. Genius is anything that expands. The universe is always expanding. If you're here, you're here because you came here to learn something, explore something, maybe you get some new information meet some new people that's a hallmark of genius i did a little bit of research because i wasn't really clear and i went online and i found out that if you just search something like unlock your genius i think you get more than 2 million uh 10 million responses on google so my qualification for being here is that i have the um moxie to show up. So I want to tell you a couple of things that uh people have said about what genius is. 
Genius is having a curious mind. A curious mind means, you know, if we only live with a certain set of experiences, how are we ever going to grow? But if we have a curious mind, that means if we choose every day to try something we haven't tried, show up somewhere we've never showed up before, be open to a possibility that we're really uncomfortable with, reach out to someone and ask a question that you don't have an answer to. That kind of curiosity not only is one of the hallmarks of genius, but it is one of the ways you can grow your genius. Because I, in absolute truth, believe that every single one of us has genius. So another hallmark of genius is um, people who think abstractly. Now, when we go to work, we go to work, some of us go to work at jobs where we're given a set of assignments and there's a hierarchy. This is an entrepreneurial network, which means that if you're here, you're either an entrepreneur or you're curious about it or you stumbled into it or something has given you the impetus to show up here. That is a hallmark of genius. Anything you do to expand your mind, to expand your opportunities, that is genius. Um, here are some of the things that other people have said on the topic of genius. Risk takers. Any entrepreneur is a risk taker because to be an entrepreneur, what you have to do is you have to step out there and say, I am trusting that who I am, the experience that I have, the desire that I have to meet, grow, share, make an impact is strong enough to carry me past all of the challenges that come up with material life, with um, putting yourself out there with what we call um, imposter syndrome, with the fear that comes of being known and named and seen. So the willingness to be that vulnerable and to step up to the plate, we call that a risk taker. And that's also a sign of genius. Can I get in the chat window or a show of hands of something? Does any of this resonate with you? Can any of you say, yes, I've experienced something like that? All right, not really getting a response on that. So maybe I need to change what I'm saying. Uh, actually, why don't I go to that? Oh, oh, I did. I am getting feedback on that. That's great. Okay, that gives me a little reassurance because here I am jumping in and taking a risk here. So I want to tell you, okay, here's another thing that people put to the test. Routine. Okay, so we talk about the brain and we talk about people have different temperaments. You may be left brained. You may have a very linear way of thinking of things. You might be right brained. You might have a very gestalt way of thinking of things. If you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter if you're left brained or right brained. You have done the work to bridge your brains because you cannot be an entrepreneur without putting yourself to the task of um, organization, linear thinking, putting your product or your service out to a range of people that have maybe a different way of communicating. You need to be flexible. You need to be um, able to turn on a dime and you have to be able to manage failure. So genius that falls under, all of that falls under genius, but also being flexible enough to step outside of your routine is one of the things, because what did I say genius is? Genius is always growing. Genius is stepping outside of your comfort level. If we do not have the capacity 
to take every aspect of our life, every aspect of our business and flip it and say, what would it look like if we're never going to have what it takes to think beyond the box? So back when I was in design school, I think we would have said genius is thinking outside the box. One of the things that I like to talk to about people, about with people, I, I'm building a coaching business. And one of the things that I talk to people about is I say, picture your life. You live on a plot of land. You have a certain um, coterie, a certain group of family members, friends. I liken it like to taking one of those great big blue tarps and putting a weight or an anchor on the corners. And that's your plot of land. That's your world. The challenge with that is there's a huge world outside of that. So what happens if you take the weights off the corner of the tarp and you set it to fly? What happens is you can travel anywhere, land anywhere meet anyone, change your paradigms, and flourish, right? So I'm inviting you guys here today to consider the possibility that there's a place where you might want to go with your life that's beyond that. So under the list of things that I said I did my best to deliver on, one of them is the LEAP system, Level Up, Engage, Accelerate, and Prosper to supercharge your uh, results. So one of the other hallmarks of genius is that we get interested in so many different things. Can I get a, a little bit of feedback from you? How many of you have been doing the same thing your entire life? Has any of you been doing the same thing your entire life? Okay, so actually I'm gonna go on gallery view so I can see everybody's hands. Anybody else? By the way, if you come on screen and I see your face, then I might be able to give you, ah, <laughs> yay, there's somebody I know here. There's actually, I think, more than one person I know here, which is wonderful. Okay, now I'm a little bit nervous. So one of the things that I grapple with and there's a person here, Patricia, and uh, I should say John Smith, and she knows me. She's known me since I was a little child. She's pretty aware of this. When you have so many opportunities, when you are so curious, when you're out there exploring the world, how do you focus? How do you get things done? How do you ever manage the influx of information. I grew up in a household where my father kept papers. As a result, I keep papers. I have piles and piles and piles and piles of papers. When I was a child, I had piles and piles and piles of bags. Every bag lined up all the way around the perimeter of my room had a different project in it. I got a nod out of that one. <laughs> Thank you for that. I don't feel so alone here. Well, to manage this, and because I'm now working in groups and I'm teaching groups, came up with a system and I call it LEAP. And I call it LEAP for two reasons. LEAP is when you're like me, you know, I'm talking about this, the courage to get out there and expand your world. And I'm really a scaredy cat. So I kind of close my eyes and leap. And I do it regularly. It's like being taunted. Something scares me. I have to try it. I had a cat for a while. When he came to me, he'd been pretty traumatized. He had been in a house where the tenants were evicted and he had gone without food and water for five days. He didn't have a collar. He had fleas. He had um, ear mites. He was all dusty. He had never been... Um, he hadn't been taken care of. And I will tell you, that cat had courage. When he came to stay at my house and went under the blanket and disappeared, I lifted it up and he came right out. I learned from that cat and I leap. 
But I also learned that to really succeed in this life, you have to have balance. And one of the ways to have balance is if you're really right-brained, do some left-brained work, which means find something linear that you can hold on to. So I have a system and I call it LEAP. Um, and I'm actually going to put something during question and answer. I'm going to put a little mini video series in there. So if you like the system, you can play with it. It's all yours. LEAP means L is level up, engage, level up. Level up, engage, accelerate, and prosper. It's a roadmap. It's a roadmap for me. And I'm sharing it with you because one of the things that I've discovered in entrepreneurship is it's not just a journey of making money, of building a business, of stepping out in front of people and selling your product or service. Entrepreneurship is a life passion and it is a discipline that takes you to new levels. Half of entrepreneurship is personal development. I don't know if any of you, <laughs> I got another nod from that. Oh, I'm getting more than one nod. That's really helpful to see. Because sometimes when we talk, we talk about ourselves and it's really good to get validation on something like that. So the path to leveling up has different meaning for people. Uh, for me, leveling up means go to a new level in personal development by letting go of blame, limiting beliefs, avoidance habits, inauspicious behaviors, and reach to be in equipoise and effective. So I noticed there's one woman on here who, um, when she came on, she said she is moving into a field of I think it was healing, wellness. Sometimes we change the things we're doing in our lives because we complete something and it's time to move to a new level or we need new experiences. So leveling up can be not just a personal development path, but it can also be how do you level up your business? Do you find business partners? Do you grow your community? Do you find, um, do you access new information? Do you keep up with the technology? So level up is an, a broad term, but when you're working with your own particular genius, leveling up can help you ground and keep you fully present with the work that you're doing in a way that you can jot it down in a journal. You can keep track of what it is that you're doing that allows you to come closer to your goals. Leveling up might just be that. What is my goal? E, engage. What's it mean to engage? Engage your fears, engage your brilliance, engage your relationships. One of the tasks I was given when I was looking for myself was reach out to the people who know you and love you and ask them to give you three words. Those three words, to are maybe the first three words that they think of when they think of you. Do they think of you as organized or loving or threatening or inspiring? Sometimes we have to go to the world around us to see ourselves. So engaging can mean, again, in the soft skills and in the personal development, how do you grow your world by seeing yourself from others' eyes and learning to see others from the compassion that you experience when people share their stories or their observations. Engaging can also mean when you're in a, an, a, an increasingly overwhelming world. We have chat GBT, we have marketing, everything. We get hundreds of emails a day. When things get so overwhelming, what do you do to ground yourself? One of the easiest things to do to ground yourself is to get face-to-face -face with another person and just remember and feel what it feels like to remember that you're not alone, you're engaging in a human experience, and those people are your family 
your clients, your peers, because we're moving more and more into a world where so much goes online, so much is the language, so much is the offering, and what we're forgetting is who we are authentically. So engaging can mean engage all of your history, engage all of your beloveds, engage in new learnings, engage. But engage is like when you're in a car, you engage the gears. What is it that you do? You take conscious action to put your self out there and interact and mesh so that you get some amplified results. Accelerate. I just came back from a workshop with a woman named Jennifer Huff, and she's all about the universe. And yes, I love curious things, and I've traveled a bit to Greece and stuff. There's a term, and it's called um, pi. We know about pi. Pi is how you do area of a circle, circumference, things like that. Well, phi is the golden ratio. It's also called Fibonacci, the Fibonacci numbers. It's also the way a plant grows around a pole. It's parity. It's what you look at in a piece of fruit. But the cool thing about um, phi is the spiral, which we see in so many places, always grows. You know, we talk about this economy. The economy is in trouble if it's not growing, right? I travel to India and I hang out when I have the opportunity with saints. And what do they teach us? They teach us that love is always growing. It is never ending. You're all entrepreneurs. What is necessary to make your business thrive? It has to grow. It has to grow. You have to grow. There have to be new opportunities new ways to look at your world, right? Do you ask yourself that every day? What am I doing to grow my community? What am I doing to grow my knowledge? What am I doing to grow my insights so that I'm better able to provide the service that I provide, create the products that I create? I don't know what all of you do, but this is the way it manifests for me. And the reason this system is so essential for me is because if I don't have a roadmap, I'm everywhere. I know that a lot of entrepreneurs these days are moving into healing fields, energy fields, um, social services, things like that. And that can be very challenging if you don't have balance, because that might mean that you're giving all of your time and all of your energy, and you're not finding the place for yourself, the roadmap that you need to provide the highest level of your own genius to the world. Excuse me for a moment. So, the last letter in LEAP is PROSPER. PROSPER is very personal, but it seems to me that every one of you here has come to the path that you're on because you have some sort of a goal. And to prosper is to reach for that goal and to have knowledge. It's like stars or spotlights or uh, rubrics or steps along the path that you can measure as you're reaching places. Because one of the things about the universe in general is we never reach the end of it. If you're crossing a room and you go halfway and then halfway, 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 that's the reverse spiral. You never get to the end, right? Well, another aspect of genius is you tend to look at everything so discriminately that you can't see the bigger picture. So, some of us, we draw roadmaps. So I'm sharing with you the LEAP roadmap just because it might give you a little bit of fun, a little bit of opportunity, and a little way of organizing your brain. It works pretty well for mine. So let me see where I am in the path. Okay, I'm running behind. 
So I have a section here on recognizing some of the values and constraints that support or govern your results. So I used to work in the toy industry. And one of the best things about working in the toy industry, aside from the fact that you got to make things that make kids really happy, is that you get constraints. You get a price point. This has to be under $20. And it has to give a lot of value. If you don't have constraints in your life and you're out there free flowing, it's an amazing life, but it's really hard to get anything done. So one of the ways you can exercise your genius is to give yourself constraints. Create a container for what you're trying to do. Let's say you want to build a business one of the ways to know that you're going to build a successful business is to de determine who your client base is. That's a constraint. We call it niche or avatar. Who is your ideal client? When you do that, you're able to deliver a higher level of success to your clients. So constraints, we look at constraints as no, I'm being caged, I'm being, I'm being um, limited in what I'm doing. Constraints are actually a really amazing and brilliant tool to give you room to roam. When you have constraints, you can say, oh, I'm not confused. I have something I can dig my teeth into. I have something where I can get traction here. I can be the big fish in the little pond. That too is genius. Genius, part of genius is being able to look at your life and say, every single thing in my life is an opportunity. The workshop that I went to, um, it was called the embodiment workshop. And the woman had a brilliant way of defining things. She's all about physics. And uh, I have a little bit of interest in physics, but I never studied it. But one of the side effects of being in Mensa is you can go to these really cool colloquiums and meet the people who came up with the Harvey Hubble telescope or string theory or understand the universe in a way that unless you're down there really tight with the microscope, you can't. But one of the things this woman said, which gave me such a lift, is we look at the world as good and bad. Oh, this was painful. Oh, this was rewarding. And we follow that path. And the lesson that she gave, which I left that workshop with, is everything in this life is either the one as in it is giving you results or taking you in the direction you want to go. And if it is not the one, it is the clarifying one. It is that which is helping you see what it is that you, the results of your actions, but it's also perhaps the direction you don't want to go or the possibility that you don't want to travel towards. So when we look at that, um, I put down here values and constraints. Values, I put values under genius too. Because as I said, if you're here and you're an entrepreneur, you're here because you're striving, you're building, you're creating, you're growing, you're expanding something. And that is a sign of genius. When you incorporate that with your values, that gives you amplitude. That allows you to supercharge and really cover the distance. Is there anybody here who has any questions about this? If you have any questions and you want to, well, we will have a question and answer at the end. But if there's something that resonates with you, I'm inviting you to put it in the chat. And if there's something I'm saying that you need more clarification on, I'm also inviting you to put it in the chat. Again, because I said there's over 10 million um, 
listings on Google for how to unlock your genius or what is your genius. We can only go from the realm we have, right? But know this, as you get out there, if you take your values and you give yourself a framework, you can call it constraints, you put the two of those together and you make a commitment to explore with curiosity, you're going to get amplified results. We also call that switching from issues and difficulties to welcome challenges and opportunities. None of you would be here if you didn't have a passion to overcome challenges. The challenge, one of the challenges, well, some of the challenges I faced, I ran a business for over 20 years. I ran a toy business. And we live in this life and Sometimes there are circumstances that shift. Like I worked in the toy industry uh, for a long, long, long time. And when I started in the toy industry, I worked in a corporation. I didn't last in a corporation because corporations, they're big. It's like turning a ship in the ocean. It takes so much energy to turn that ship. But when you're an entrepreneur, you can get out there and you can make it happen so much faster, right? I mean, that's part of the fat passion of being an entrepreneur. So when I had this business, when I had this toy business, um, all right, now I'm losing where I, <laughs> where I was going with this. Uh, one of the challenges, one of the challenges, but one of the opportunities was it, we did a lot of business with China. Now, China has a much lower cost of living. Um, so we purchase a lot of things from China because manufacturing your co costs are lower. Um, if you have, if you're an entrepreneur, you may use VA services, virtual assistance services from the Philippines, from India, from Indonesia, from someplace like that, because there's a difference in the, uh, the, the, uh, monetary rates and what it costs to live. Well, a challenge that I had in the toy business, and actually when I went out to service the toy business, was that I was competing with China. And I couldn't compete with China on price. So when you're flexible and you have genius, what you do is you take your business in a new direction. And the direction we took it in, because I had a staff at that time, was innovation and speed. So you can't get something from China to here quickly unless you put it on a plane. And that's really expensive. But what you can do, hi Z, <laughs> what you can do is you can be stateside and you can sell your clients on the prospect that you bring your unique genius to the table, that you can deliver something with speed, with quality, which is unique and is in a field that you have authority in that they cannot get from China. So that's what it means to flip the switch from issues and difficulties to welcome challenges and opportunities. If you look at the things that come up as you're doing your work, one of the things you can do with your genius, as I said, this is all about stretching your genius and owning your genius. One of the things that you can do with your genius is take every single thing that comes. If it's an opportunity, how can I fold that opportunity out? Like those decks of cards, they're all attached and you can fold them out into a strip or when we used to cut out paper dolls. Or if it's a challenge, how can you flip the switch on that challenge? What is it that you're there to learn? What does it clarify? What opportunity does it give you? Is it a challenge or is it a constraint? Is it something bad or is it an opportunity to try something new? This has been one of the biggest challenges for me because 
I feel things. I feel people. I honor all of you who are out there because when you have your own business, you're putting yourself on the line. And that means you're going to get feedback from people. And sometimes that feedback is really positive. And sometimes that feedback really hurts. And if you're an entrepreneur, it's like you've built this body, which is so sensitive that anytime somebody pricks it, you feel it throughout your whole system. So learning to flip the switch, using your genius to look at new opportunities and say, wow, I really needed to learn that. That's a gift. That is a way to flip the switch. Let's see what else I needed to give you guys. I haven't think of that. Three more minutes. All right. Aggregate your skills and experiences to define your unique and valuable authority. Well, there's not much I can do with this in the last couple of minutes, except to say this. The people that I've seen that are successful are the ones who've learned to accept the challenges they're faced with and grow those challenges into a message whereby they can put the, the aggregate experiences of their lives out there in a way that they can teach, share, serve, and show people something that they haven't seen. So we look at things, oh, we want everything to be good, pretty nice. How often have you really responded to something that was perfect? You know, I used to do a lot of toys for Disney and Mickey Mouse's eyes don't match. One is shorter, one is fatter, one is tilted because we don't like perfect. We like what resonates. So when you're out there, take that resonance and take what's yours and what's unique. And this is one of the last things I'm gonna end with. I met somebody once who said, are you an intuitive? And I said, I'm intuitive. And he said, let's reframe that. Are you an intuitive? Try saying it and see how your life changes. So I said, I am an intuitive and my life changed. I'm inviting every single one of you to say, I am a genius and look at how your life changes. Genius flourishes when you know your truth, what sings within you and you own it, nurture it and share it because genius grows when you put it out there and when you find others to reflect it back. It's really hard to live in a bubble. You need to be surrounded by love, community support and to get there. You have to value yourselves, ask for help, embrace mentorship, live big, be available to the miracles that abound. That's it. My time is up. How did I do? <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, everybody who showed up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Those are very beautiful words. All right. So thank you so much for your talk. Now um, let's head on to our question and answer portion. Now we encourage the audience to ask questions by raising their hands on their screen or using the raise hand feature here on Zoom. So um, if you are called by the speaker, we will unmute you. And let me share one of the reasons we're doing it that way. If you do want to put something in the chat and you don't feel comfortable speaking, you can do that. I might miss it because I have my contact lenses in. And so I have my vision is going out. One is far, far and one is close. But at least this way you can see my eyes. So open for questions, open for challenges, open for opportunities. Anyone want to speak up? Z, what do you got? There you go. So I'd like to ask you, what's your next challenge? What's your challenge right now? What are you facing right now? My challenge. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, my challenge right now is that I took over the reins of Rhode Island Mensa and I'm dealing with a number of personalities, all geniuses, 
all card-carrying geniuses, and every single one of them has special needs, special uh, desire for attention. And I have been so broad in the things that I've been doing that I have to niche down and become hypersensitive to each individual's needs, plus build help build the business with this team because when you're in a when you're the chairman of a volunteer organization it's essential that you have the utmost respect and you incorporate your whole team with everything you do so right now my biggest challenge is how to negotiate personalities in such a way that we can all come together and work cohesively in a business that isn't run by me, but is run by seven or eight of us that serves a few hundred of us. How was that? <laughs> Anything else you want to say to that? Trying to unmute, sorry. No, I mean, that's, that's fair. I mean, I, I can, I can see that. But knowing that each of those people, so what you're trying to do is align visions, right? Everybody wants, has their own say, their own. And so in, in my business, even though I'm a, a solopreneur, I'm being pulled in a lot of different directions. People telling me that this is the best path or that's the best path. Um, so how are you? Got it. Okay. Got it. How am I responding to that? By tightening the reins. Because, yes, we have to be sensitive to others, but we also have to own our own authority. So when I say tightening the reins, um, creating really good boundaries and really good guidelines, which is like, for instance, um, we have one personality on there who likes to show what, what I would call throw a shoe in the works regularly or throw people under the bus. She's not very socially balanced and she gets very easily injured or insulted. Like we have one person who's a lawyer and he speaks with a lot of legal ease and she gets bothered. And so when I say tighten the reins, what I've taken to doing is all right, if you're going to start writing poison pen, pen letters and you know calling people out for every action they take and we're all volunteers, then I'm going to make every single email transparent. So everybody is accountable for their words. So you send out an email, that email is going to be forwarded to everybody on the board. So it is a way to create some boundaries and some sensibilities around how we're doing it. And then the next is to say, let's work towards some common goals. And I, when I ran my toy business, this was one of the most fun things because I love seeing people light up with passion. So one of the most fun things is to meet with people individually, find out what lights them up and give them ownership of, them, of it. So each one on our on our um, executive committee, I'm working with to say, what is it you really love to do? And who would you like to have on board with you to support you with that? And who would you like on board with you for redundancy? So you don't have to go beyond the level of what you can do because you're doing it by yourself. So that's integrating everything we're doing. Because what we have had in the past is an organization, every man for himself, each one had an individual identity, an individual job, and none of it came together, and we're not having fun. Is that a, a, a more clarifying answer for what you're looking for? Yeah, and I think, um, yes, it is. And, and uh, But you have to be the authority. Right. And people are looking to you. So another thing for that is to learn to read the signs. That's read your body, figure out, 
are these people I want to spend my days with? If it's not somebody you want to spend your day with, is the message they're giving you a message you really need to hear? Because with billions of people on this planet, you kind of get to be selective. I mean, that is your opportunity to be selective. So yes, use your genius, know who you are, use that authority. And when you speak with authority, people feel comforted, they feel served, supported, heard. So yeah, I would say that word, authority. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Am I that scary? <laughs> I'm hoping somebody else will speak up. <laughs> I think Pat unmuted herself. Yeah, Go I ahead, did. Pat. Oh, yay. Hi, Pat. Hi. I, I just get my camera on. Sorry, hon. I guess I'm getting a little bit trying to figure out what this group is you belong to. That's a bunch of geniuses. Oh, okay. I mean, that, 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 I mean uh, yes, okay. we, we all, just a moment, we all have geniuses within us, but it's okay. all our gifts, okay? But Thank some you. of these people that think they're a genius, they got a big eagle up the yin yang, you know? They, okay. they think they know it all, and they don't. Okay, I'm going to put. Yeah, I, I just kind of, I just kind of figured, trying to figure out this, I can't figure it out. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. I forgot. I'm putting three things in the chat right now. Okay. Thanks. One is the top is that link to the 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 leap system. Okay, that's okay. The second one is the usmensa.org. And that is every state has a Mensa community. And you can look up in your state um, if you live in Massachusetts. I'm in Canada. Okay. So look, uh, if you go to the last one, that's mensa.org, that's international. Okay. Thank you. Or wherever you are in Calgary, uh, I mean, <laughs> wherever you are in Canada, um, yeah. you can go to uh, put in your town name and then uh, Mensa and do a search. Because Mensa, Mensa has events. You don't have to be a member to go to Mensa events. Um, but they have a lot of things to welcome people and interest people. And um, just to give you a little bit of background, Mensa is really a social community. Okay. They do have some really cool things. They have something called SIGHT. Now, they have something called SIGS, Special Interest Groups. So you can join a Google group that's all over the world that is maybe um, motorcycle riders who knit. Or a friend of mine runs a group called Underachievers. There's a lot of groups on astronomy, things like that. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it gives you an access to this community. It also, they also have something called Sight. I don't know if any of you guys were ever familiar with something called Couch surfing. Couch surfing was a, a website where you could travel around the world and stay on people's couches. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mensa has something called Sight. And Sight means you can talk to your local Sight coordinator and say, I want to go stay in Romania. Can you find me a family to stay with? And they will find a Mensa family who wants to host you. So you can go world hopping and hang out with other Mensons. But I'm going to come right back down to it and say Mensa is a test in society. And if you're at all interested in testing in, the first thing you do is go and get online and find every single free IQ test you can find. Because if you go and walk into a test and it says, you know, we have a dog, a deer, a bunny rabbit, and a kitten. What is the different one in there? You know, people will say a deer. Somebody else might say, well, this has this many legs. This has two ears. So it can be really annoying and frustrating. And it's a really arbitrary way to find out 
if you belong in this society. If you do want to check out something like Mensa, and I put it up there because it's nonprofit. It's not out there for money. It's there to create a community for people who are looking for belonging. And also, um, and the, you know, it's a place Google goes and goes shopping for um, employees there. You know, they, they put out a magazine every month and there's advertising in it and stuff. But the other thing that I would do is if you really want to stretch and you're, you know that you've got one of those kinds of genius that doesn't show up on a test or doesn't show up mathematically, create your own group. Okay, can you please, yeah, this genius thing, it's just, okay. What do you, define what a genius is to you? Okay, to me, a genius is someone who realizes that there's more out there, they're curious, and they're driven enough to explore and yes. create and build and grow and do something that is outside of the narrow confines that they learned from their family, from their school, from their classmates, from their job. Genius mm -hmm. is, I'm ready to go to the next level. Genius mm -hmm. is what it is in you that shines. And, what and how, you is, can, how you can serve and help the world, I think. I like to say that. I tend to not say that in groups because... Why? Not, because not everybody has figured that out for themselves, oh, okay. or it might not be what floats everybody's boat. Yeah. I consider it an, a natural outpouring of genius. I have a mentor, his name is Iman Agai. And I do believe that this organization is something that he started, is that correct? So Iman teaches business, but what he does is he trains leaders. Because natural outpouring of discovering that you can make a living, that you can be free with your time, that you can be curious, the natural outpouring of that for most of us is to step into a life of service. That's right. Because after you've climbed the mountain, what is there? Mm -hmm. Heavens. Mm -hmm. And I am totally wedded to service. Yeah. But I'm also conscious that there's a lot of people out there and they're all smart people, but we all have different paths. Like I'm in the coaching industry. I've chosen Iman Agai as my mentor because he is about integrity and leadership and going out and making an impact in the world. Mm -hmm. I work with other mentors and some of them are about making money. Some of them are about having visibility. Some of them are about um, taking all you can take or mm -hmm. just a lot of them are about, you know, martial arts is amazing and magic is amazing. And people sometimes use it for their own personal growth to the exclusion of others. And sometimes they use it to manipulate others. Yeah. It, everyone has a sacred point of view. It is not my call to determine whether or not someone is authentically a genius if they are not putting their life in the the, the realm of service. That's what it is to me. Excuse me. And I'm totally inviting you to um, if you go to the top one, the, that link. It'll ask for your email and it will um, give you instant access to that little leap system. Okay, thank you. What also do is it will give you an opportunity at the bottom to have a conversation with me. Let's meet. I'd like to do that. I guess I, where I have issues is this, this word genius. <laughs> I have a really issue with that. Okay. I, I, I don't know what it is, but I guess some people that think they're a genius 
they don't really give a damn about the rest of the world and what's going on, how they can help the rest of the world, because they, they, they're they so tied up with their own ego, they can't even see past it. I agree. So, I, I, so that's where I have a, I, I, that's where it's blocking me, not blocking me, but it's, a, it, yes, there is geniuses, but we all, all of us, every one of us here us have genius. Have genius. Absolutely. Yeah. So help me go out and bust that conception. Okay. That's why I'm on this call. Good. Thank you. I'm be I, 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 well, it just doesn't, I don't know what it is. It just, I, I think we need to, uh, everybody need, and everybody here, I just should talk about everybody because I can't. I talk about myself. My mission in life is to help and make the world a better place with what Absolutely. I do. And that's what I, I'm 74 years young and I'm still down while rocking it. And that's my mission. And I'm absolutely I, I, <laughs> this. It's been a good conversation. It's been great. But the word genius kind of irritates me a bit. <laughs> so let's redefine genius. There was I don't think there was one time in here when I said to be a genius, you have to have X, Y or Z. To get in Mensa, you have to have X, Y, or Z. You know why I'm in Mensa? I told you that I had um, brain trauma. Yes. And I didn't, I lost my my um, my photographic memory and I stumble over things. Yeah. And, and this guy said, if you were smart enough, you would have. When I, but let me tell you about the man that tested me. Mm. He's married to a woman who's 17 years older than he is. And he's got a replacement heart. And he's had that replacement heart for 25 years, which means it could die at any moment. Yeah. And this is one of the kindest and most loving human beings I've ever met. And I live in Providence, Rhode Island by myself. Yeah. And he and his wife take me in for Christmas every year. That's lovely. So I joined because he loves it and I want to hang out with him. Yeah. And I got to tell you, honestly, what it mostly is, is a group of people who are trying to find community. Because they're oddballs. I don't know if we can call them oddballs again. I, Mensa, see, that's another thing. The wait, genius wait, and the oddball wait. thing. I don't <laughs> in Mensa, in Mensa, a lot call themselves uh, misfit. Uh, what do we call it? Um, the toys, you know, the unusual toys, the unusual um Toys for misfits. Yeah, yeah, the misfit toys. Yeah, yeah, the misfit toys. It's said tongue in cheek, but it's said within the confines. Why would you be a misfit if you just want to help the world be a better place? Why? why? Oh, no, no, that. Okay. Okay, so let's break out that. Let's break that out. You do (laughs) not join Mensa to change the world. You go out there and you follow your passion. You become an entrepreneur. You do. I don't, I don't know, but we need to help. We need to. We need to. I'm sorry. Um, I lost you. Your voice. I think okay. you. Okay. Died for a second or two. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just think we need to. Help. The world a better place. I'm not out here to change the world, but I think we need to and and, and work with healthy. Uh oh, I agree. And one of the ways that I'm working towards that is to say a way that you can make the world a better place is put your genius out in the world. And your genius is your understanding of the gifts that you have that in using those gifts in service, you can amplify 
the, the impact you have in the world. Thank you. That's very nice put. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. I'm not advocating that anybody go out there and join, join Genius, uh, join Mensa unless they want to. But Mensa does have outreach groups that actually go out and teach and help like kids and individuals discover that they're not odd. They're just smart. There was a, I think it was, was it Isaac Asimov did a story, I think. It was mm -hmm. in the awards about two boys like standing at a fence, looking at all the spaceships taking off for the heavens, right? And one yeah. boy said, I want to be a, a spaceship pilot. And the other boy was, I don't remember if he knew what he wanted to be or not. But when they would reach the age probably of 13, because you think of bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs and the rites of passage, they would go to this facility and they would have a tape run through their head and they would be taught everything they needed for their vocation. So when they reached the, that age, whatever age, this was a long time I read this, a long time ago I read this story, they both went and one of the boys, he became a starship pilot. Mm -hmm. And the other boy, they sent to an institution because they said, we cannot run the tape. Your brain does not accept the tape. We don't have a place for you. And he was vilified. Fast forward to what came about, and I don't remember the whole story. It was a short story, a Hugo Award, but I did go searching for it later. That boy was later contacted and asked to come and serve because it is those who cannot be conditioned who write the tapes. You bet. You bet it is. So that has been the life story that has mm -hmm. totally carried me. Yeah, you bet. That it's, you know, it made me think another thing. Thomas Edison, which you all know, the light bulb guy, right? Thomas Edison. Anyway, when he was a young child, he came home with a note from his school to his mother. And he gave the note to his mother. And the mother just read it. And she, she said, uh, the note says that, you know, you're too smart for the school. I have to teach you at home. So he said, okay. So years later, his mom passed away. And he found this letter from the school in his mom's belongings. And he read it. And it was just saying that Thomas is not going to go anywhere in school. You need to keep him at home. So there you go. So he was the biggest with Thomas. Yeah. So that's the same thing. Because they, they condemned him for what he was and the, but the mother hid this for all these years because it would put him down if he would have read she would have read the letter to him the way that the school said right so okay. it was yeah that was thomas edison i mean the brilliant man okay you and i have a connection here mm -hmm. my great-grandfather was thomas edison's patent lawyer oh you're gonna be kidding <gasps> Oh, it makes me, oh, really? If you can look at, um, up the, the um, Dyer was the oh, name. Wait. And I looked, um, Richard Dyer. I, oh, Wayne I, Dyer. No, that wouldn't be Wayne Dyer. Was Wayne Dyer. But there were two generations of Dyers in my family that actually served as patent lawyers for Thomas Edison. Is that right? Isn't that interesting? And then the notes I got from school were to get me out of class to go to the art department because I lived with so much anxiety and I couldn't function. They would send me to the art department to help me manage my anxiety. Wow. Yeah. Isn't it something, Noe? It's a very beautiful experience. Thank you so much yeah. for your question, Pat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you. if 
if anybody else has any questions, uh, may, perhaps uh, you can reach out to uh, Michelle uh, personally. Uh, where is the best, how is the best way to uh, people to reach you out for their questions? Well, if anybody goes and picks up this link for the mini course at the bot and uh, gives their email at the bottom of that, there is book a call. And also, oh, I'll there you are. Okay. Um, can I? Is it okay for me to put my personal email in the in the chat? Yeah, that would be all right. Or a calendar link or something. Sure. That okay. would be perfect. Uh, let, I'll, I'll put I'll put both. I go by Maduri. So it's Maduri at. So are you on LinkedIn and Facebook both, Michelle? Is it Michelle or I Maduri? I am. Um, on, on LinkedIn, I'm at um, I'm at Maduri Michelle Fremont. And on Facebook, I'm on at Michelle Maduri Fremont. I was trying to find you on Facebook. I'll go to LinkedIn now. That was inter isn't that interesting? You know, we're we're so closely connected. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it really I, is. Oh wait a minute. Um, uh, okay, so let me uh, put this to everyone in the meeting, and now I will put a link for calendar. Okay. I have to check what it is. Give me a second. Uh, I always forget what the, the lead ins are. Let me uh, copy and paste that. Sorry about this. It's taking me a little longer than I planned. No problem. So, well, while, um, did you find it? Uh, yes. Okay. Slash slash C A L E N D L Y. I can't find it. Dot com. Um, slash C L A R I T Y 108. That is my calendar link. Yeah. And my Facebook is this. Michelle Fremont. But it might, okay. um, I have a shaved head in the picture. Okay. So, um, and anybody can see that in the chat box right now. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for putting that out there, uh, Michelle. Now, uh, we're on the last part of our event, our takeaways and gratitude circle. So we highly encourage you to raise your hand if you want to share any takeaways that you had on this event or if you want to give your appreciation to our beautiful speaker for today. I'll put some appreciation out there. I okay. appreciate every one of you that showed up mm -hmm. because... I'm not accustomed to coming on a stage and speaking for this length of time. And I'm really thankful for the insights and the questions. Pat, you gave me so much value because you. I now need to step into that authority. And I will going forward to say genius is not only about knowing and acting on your potential. It's always also about giving back. You got that. That's so true, huh? So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. And Zina for focusing me and asking for a tangible. And I hope you got the response on that. And uh, it's uh, Keisha, right? I want to thank you so much for hosting and facilitating and making all this possible. Mm -hmm. And for John Smith. <laughs> Hi, John Smith, also known as Patricia. Thank you so much for coming. 
Thank you, Michelle. I would also like to personally share my takeaways. I love it when you said genius grows when you put it out there. And you being here is a testimony of that. You really gave back your genius by sharing with us your talk. And that really encouraged us to put ourselves out there, especially for entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. wanting to start their business, to be encouraged in putting themselves out there. So thank you so much, Madhuri Michelle. All right. Anybody else? It was great. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah, thank so you, Madhuri, for putting up with me and all my questions because I just tell it as it is, right? <laughs> so hopefully that's what I do. <laughs> totally, I think, totally loved that. Thank I think you. Joanne uh, raised her hand. I did. I want to say thank you very much. That was a wonderful talk. And one of the things that really, well, two things struck me was uh, walk with your own genius, which is something that we don't often think about because we think, oh, we have to have this certain paradigm of what a genius is when that's not really the truth. The truth is we have our own genius within us and that's what we are working from and through. And I think our path on this planet and why we're here is doing that, walking within our own genius. And the other thing that I loved is the courage to get out there and to explore the world, which is something that a lot of people don't do. And you've obviously done a lot. And it, it really showed in all of the things that you shared today. And I just want to say thank you for taking the time to talk with us and share with us your wisdom. And I sure did appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. That's such valuable feedback. Really valuable feedback. And also, Pat, I'm going to challenge you on something and say. Oh, go for it. <laughs> what about putting up with you? It was, I'm thanking you for the value you brought. Thank you. Because I need to be held accountable. Well, don't we all? Put that in the mix. We should put that in the mix. And I really do hope you'll reach out because I'd love to get to know any one of you on the call better. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it was good. Thank you so much. I did friend you on, I think it was LinkedIn. I can't remember which one, but I did one. Yeah. So thank you. That was good. Thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, I would like to thank everyone who showed up and sticked towards the end of today's event. Our next event is going to be on June 28th. 2023 it's still at the same time 4 p.m pacific and further events on that i mean further details of the, that event will be posted on our meetup groups and uh you will also be updated with uh your emails as well all right once more thank you so much everyone and we will see you on the next one mm -hmm. take care thank you everybody take care bye-bye bye-bye thank you